All right, Lerato Khakao is a DA member of Parliament and Higher Education Shadow Minister. She joins us now for more on this. A very good evening to you, Lerato. Thanks so much uh, for joining us here on uh, SABC News. Thank you very much, Flo. Good evening to you and good evening to all your viewers. All right, let's let's start here then. I mean, what did you find on your oversight uh, visit? I must say quite concerning that, you know, we heard representative of NASFA saying that you know, they didn't prepare for uh, the questions. And I mean, one would think that any question uh, one would be ready for if, you know, if it's an organization that you're at the helm of. But talk to us about some of, you know, what you found um, when you were there uh, at, at, at NASFA. So, I mean, you've, you've spoken about some of the challenges that the students um, are facing. But you've also raised the fact that you, you're having an issue with the quality of management. Talk to us about overall about w what you found. Flo, you're absolutely right. We expected that the acting CEO would know what is going on in his organization that he leads. We found that himself and his delegation had absolutely no answer for anything. What we got to understand is that one, their state of readiness is very poor. Today was an actual deadline for paying out all the outstanding payments for uh, beneficiaries of the previous academic year. It is now currently five minutes past 9 p.m. This hasn't been concluded. And this is problematic because we do have registrations that are currently happening across campuses. Registrations are most likely supposed to be concluded by the end of this month. They are not ready to do so. In our request to, to find out how far they are, all they could say is that they've paid some institutions and some students without a quantification and clarity on how many students of the 20,000 students who were affected by defunding last year have been solved. So yeah. that's problem number one. The problem number yeah. two that we have a flow is that we have less than 10% of the student accommodation beds that are supposed to be available for this academic year that have been accredited. And we've raised this to be an alarm to say that we cannot have a situation like we had in the previous academic year where students were left destitute, homeless with nowhere to go, sleeping in, 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 in lecture venues and in, in, in corridors of institutions or in some cases even outside as we did because NISFAS was unable to accredit properly. And in cases where they do find beds, they find themselves sleeping in beds like those that exist at Madalabara, the NISFAS funded shacks at Madalabara in Zanin Limpopo where the Ltava Tivet College students stay. Yeah. So that's problem number two. Yeah. Problem number three that we identified in our oversight is that the minister's announcement of the funding, the funding model for the missing middle is also a pipe dream because NISFAS does not have the plan. We went to NISFAS, we're like, okay, minister said that you are ready to roll it out effectively this academic year. Give us the plan. What does it look like? What can we expect? The answer to be brief from the CEO was that we should ask DHET for that plan. So that clearly indicated to us as the Democratic Alliance that they do not have the plan. The minister was spin doctoring the nation to drive away attention from the corruption in NISFAS and corruption and fraud scandals that are happening within NISFAS and his department and that the, the, the plan is a lie. We also know that the plan is a lie because Previously, just last year, two months ago, the Minister of Finance communicated to Parliament that we do not have money as a nation, that there's a 1.1 billion shortfall, which estimates that we will have 87,000 less students who will be funded by NISFAS. And then miraculously, in the middle of a scandal, they have billions of rands available to fund a missing middle, uh, a, a missing middle that NISFAS himself does not know on how they're going to, yeah. to administer. Well, so the other thing, Flo, for... Thing. There are a lot of issues that we found. The fourth thing is that they investigation themselves as far as rooting out the corruption and fraud within the scheme and the department is no way. It hasn't even it hasn't even taken taken off altogether. The secretary, the, the secretary of the board was there. The secretary was mute the entire the entire meeting. There's absolutely no confidence for us as members of parliament and for students that NISFAS has finally gotten their house in order. All right, let's give them benefit of the doubt in that uh, perhaps, you know, maybe there's something in what they're saying that, uh, you know, they didn't prepare for some of the, the questions that you posed to them. Did you then discuss as to at which point, um, you know, they will have answers to, to your questions? At which point would you be able to get answers? I mean, you've... you've kind of uh, told me the, the sort of questions that uh, you, you, you posed to them. Have you then given them, you know, or given each other some sort of, uh, you know, time frame as to, you know, this is when uh, deadline uh, we're expecting to have some answers because, I mean, you know, students are about to go back to, to uh, their various institutions. 
they pretty much said that they, their hands are tied as far as their deployment of people across campuses. We have given them a deadline to say that they must be able to respond to us in writing within seven working days as per the culture of, of, of portfolio committees. But we still don't have confidence there that they will be able to give us those figures, particularly because OSFLO, it can't be that when you are dealing with a crisis right now, the, a crisis that had a deadline today that you've communicated to students, the Republic and members uh, um, and, and to students, the Republic and members of the media that you would have sorted out that when on that day on the deadline, you don't have answers. That clearly indicates to us that they are really not prepared. They do not have the capacity in-house to deal with these issues. The other problem that we, we had, the one answer we were able to get though, a clear answer that we were able to get is as to whether the, the four um, contracted uh, companies responsible for direct payments are still going to be responsible for direct payments this academic year and they said yes they said that they didn't want to disturb things so as far as things stand this co-invest and co are still going to be responsible for dispersing funds and we've raised flags with this to say that it's, it's no secret that these companies are out of depth they failed in the previous academic year but we also know that they are corrupt companies altogether that are linked with the I think you've got a TV on or something it's giving us terrible feedback there um, at the back there um, but anyway you, you the, as a dear had uh, said that you're opening a case against um, the minister uh, Bladen Zimanda the minister of, of higher education How How's that going? I mean, that was on the basis of some uh, leaked audio um, that, you know, Alta had uh, uh, received. And um, on the back of that, the DA, I, speak, I spoke to one of your colleagues last week about this and that there was going to be a case that's open against the minister. How far is that uh, going? I understand it was supposed to be a, a criminal case. And uh, is there anything that you can tell us in terms of an update on that? I'm, I'm asking, you know, it's unrelated to what we're talking about now, but it is kind of related because it is still, you know, got to do with NASFA. So if you can just tell us a, an update on that. Yeah, Flo, so we did lay criminal charges. The case was opened. Um, we have been receiving communication from the station and the investigations team, so that is underway. There's only so much I can reveal as far as the stage is there without compromising the integrity of the investigation itself. But what we can definitely communicate is that the grounds are, 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 are upon which we, we laid these criminal charges were, one, illegal and financially dishonest dealings, two, the abuse of positions of authority by by both Dr. by Minister Nzimanda and Dr. Koza, three, the violation of set rules and legal duties, and four, the breach of public trust. And this is all in line with the Prevention and Combating of Corruption um, Activities Act 12 of 2004. So these are the grounds upon which we, we, we laid these criminal charges. But beyond just the actions that we took, it is very important to be clear that in the meantime, President Ramaphosa cannot sit and wait for SUPS to conclude on these investigations. As a matter of urgency, as a matter of immediate effect, he needs to fire Minister Nzimande. This has been a call that has been longstanding from students across political parties, including SASCO itself, that have said that they do not have, we do not have faith in Minister Nzimande's ability to preside over this ministry. We do not have faith in his ability to lead it well in compassion. He is out of t depth. He's out of touch with the lived realities that students are facing. That is problematic. And so we want him gone. And so we're making a plea to President Ramaphosa to say, please choose us as students. Honor us, honor President uh, Mandela's legacy. Put us first. Abandon the alliance that you have with the SA. ACP. It does not serve the best interests of students. It does not serve the best interests of this country and its future. Please release Minister Zamande for his duties as a matter of urgency.